big day for the road The blue sky will take us home We'll take it easy, we'll take it slow It's a good day for the road Gorgeous. So do you, Kelly. Um, <laughs> um, on the request of Kelly and Sean, they would like a very relaxed wedding today. So here you go, I'm giving you this. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, serious part. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly and Sean have chosen you, those special and important to them, to be here today. Not only to witness the beginning of what will be, rather, what already is. We do not create this marriage, as you realise, because we cannot. What we can do, however, is celebrate with Kelly and Sean the wondrous and joyful occurrence that has already taken place in their lives and the commitment that they're about to make in front of you today. At this point, folks, it's appropriate that I read the Monitum from the Marriage Act. I, Adrian Johnston, am duly authorised by law to solemnise this, your marriage, according to the laws of Australia. Before us, Kelly and Sean are joined in marriage in my presence and in the presence of these witnesses. And I'm bound, as you know, to remind you publicly of the binding nature of the relationship in which you're about to enter. As we know, this part's all changed, thank goodness. Marriage, according to the law of Australia, is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life. The Kelly and Sean story. Do you want to tell this? Mate, this is your, this is your thing. You, you've forgotten. <laughs> you met in Hong Kong through Mel, one of Kelly's bridesmaids, and Sean was there for a work trip, and uh, Kelly was living in Hong Kong at the time. They stayed in touch and a couple of months later, uh, Sean came over to Italy and caught up with Kel while she holidayed. And a couple of months later, Kelly moved back to Australia for work and moved straight in with Sean. She's not a girl to muck around now, Kel. <laughs> straight in there. That was nearly four years ago and here we are today. Righto, here we go. Sean, do you take Kelly? to be your lawful wedded wife, will you love her, honour her, comfort her and cherish her in sickness and in health from this day forward, forsaking all others and keeping only unto her for as long as you both shall live? I do. A bit louder. I do. <laughs> Kelly, do you take Sean to be your lawful wedded husband, will you love him, honour him, comfort him and cherish him in sickness and in health from this day forward? forsaking all others, keeping only unto, unto him for as long as you both shall live. I do. No, that wasn't, that wasn't. You've worked with broadcasters all your life. I do. You hear that? Yes. We're about to do the, uh, the ring, so we'll call upon those in a moment. Sean, please repeat after me. Kelly, from this day forward. Kelly, from this day forward. I promise you these things. I promise you these things. I will laugh with you in times of joy. I will laugh with you in times of joy. And comfort you in times of sorrow. And comfort you in times of sorrow. I will share in your dreams. I will share in your dreams. And support you as you strive to achieve your goals. Support you as you strive to uh, as achieve your goals. As I strive to. 
<laughs> Achieve your goals. I think I stuffed that up. I will listen to you with compassion. I will listen to you with compassion. And understanding. And understanding. And speak to you with encouragement. And speak to you with encouragement. I will help you when you need it. I will help you when you need it. And step aside when you don't. And step aside when you don't. I will remain faithful to you for better or worse. I will remain faith to you, faithful for, with you for better or worse. <laughs> Mate, it's written on the page. You are my best friend. You are my best friend. You are my person. You are my person. And I will love and respect you always. And I will love and respect you always. And a little legal piece. You ready? I call upon the people here present. I call upon the people here present. To witness that I, Sean William Stanley Rolls. To witness that I, Sean William Stanley Rolls. Take you, Kelly Andrazy. To take you, Kelly Andrazy. As my lawful wedded wife from this moment. As my lawful wedded wife from this moment. Nice one, yeah. Sean, from this day forward. Sean, from this day forward. I promise you these things. I promise you these things. I will laugh with you in times of joy and particularly at the wedding. <laughs> I will laugh with you in times of joy. And comfort, and comfort you in times of sorrow. And comfort you in times of sorrow. I will share with your dreams. I will share your dreams with your dreams. And support you as you strive to achieve your goals. And support you when you strive to achieve your goals. I will listen to you with compassion. I will listen to you with compassion. And understanding. And understanding. And speak to you with encouragement. And speak to you with encouragement. I will help you when you need it. I will help you when you need it. And step aside when you don't. And step aside when you don't. <laughs> I will remain faithful to you for better or worse. I will remain faithful to you for better or worse. <laughs> you are my best friend. You are my best friend. You are my person. You are my person. And I love you and respect you always. And I, and I will love you and respect you always. I call upon the people here present. I call upon the people here present to witness that I, Kelly Andrazy, to witness that I, Kelly Andrazy, take you, Sean Rolls, as my lawful wedded husband from this moment. Take you, Sean Rolls, as my lawful wedded husband from this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, at this juncture, we have a couple of readings from each family, and I call upon Sean's sister. Where are you, Casey? Thank you. Love each other from this day forward, and these will be the hands that hold you tomorrow and the next day and for eternity. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as you build your life together. The hands that will touch you with love and tenderness through the years, and the hands that will comfort you like no one others can. These are the hands that will hold you through strength, grief, fear and hardship. hardship. These are the hands that will wipe the tears of joy and sorrow from your eyes, and the hands that will tenderly hold your children. These are the hands that will hold your family together and that will give you strength when you need it. And these are the hands, when wrinkled and old, will still be reaching for yours. <laughs> well done. Well done, Case. <laughs> Calling forward the Wilkses, please. Where are the Wilkses? Have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Jack, Sammy and Toby. Get on the chimpy. Love is being happy for the other person when they are happy. Being sad for the other person. Oh, I messed up. <coughs> <laughs> being sad for the the person when they are sad. Being together in good times and being together in bad times. Love is a source of strength. Love is being honest with yourself at all times. Being honest with his with the other person at all times. Telling, listening, respecting the truth and never pretending. Love is a source of reality. Well, 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 done. Done. well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Love is an understanding so complete 
that you feel as if you are a part of the other person. Accepting the other person just the way they are and not trying to change them to be something else. Love is a source of unity. Love is the pr freedom to pursue your own desires while sharing your experiences with the other person. The growth of one individual alongside of and together with the growth of another individual. Love is the source of success. Love is the excitement of planning things together, the excitement of doing things together. Love is the source of the future. Beautiful. Well done, Sammy. Well done. Love is the fury of the storm, the calm in the rainbow. Love is the source of passion. Love is giving and taking in a daily situation, being patient with each other's needs and desires. Love is the source of sharing, Love is knowing that the other person will always be with you regardless of what happens. Missing the other person when they are away but remaining near heart at all times. Love is the source of security. Love is the source of life. Well done, buddy. Sammy, go in the middle, Sammy. Rings, please. Little joke there. <laughs> oh God! Wow, this wasn't meant to happen. That wasn't in the script either. Do we have a jeweler here? Kelly and Sean, now that you've shared with each other the words of love and commitment, and we've witnessed the expression of your love together, and you've given each other these rings, you now joined your hands and hearts together before us today. I now have pleasure in proclaiming you to be husband and wife. Sean, you may kiss your bride.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to our first speaker of the night. The father of the bride, Mr. David Drazy. Good evening, everyone. My name's David Drazy, and I'm blessed enough to be the father of the most stunning bride. Kelly was born on the 14th of May, 1982. My most favourite sexy daughter. <laughs> As she keeps telling us anyway. But she seems to forget I've got two other gorgeous daughters who are also my favourites. <laughs> Kelly was born healthy but tiny six pound 13, with a squash nose. <laughs> she was fine, but I knew something was wrong with her mum. As soon as she was born, when the doctor looked over at me and said, sign the consent forms, I'm taken in and into surgery. Luckily, he did. As Anne was only two minutes away from dying, she was lucky to survive. And that became a very memorable day. When Kelly was little, she didn't like having dummies. Instead, she decided to suck on the ears of a soft, snoopy dog toy. <laughs> because the ears of the dog got so wet, Anne had to wash them constantly. Soon enough, we had to buy one, then another, and God knows how many we had in the end. <laughs> anyway, we ended up calling him um, 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 Scungy Bows. <laughs> she used to put it one time, only three in her mouth, and she'd walk around the house swinging them from side to side. <laughs> when she was at school, I once asked. Kelly's teachers, one of her teachers anyway, I said, is Kelly one of the in crowd? <laughs> because she was more interested in socialising than studying. Her teachers just looked at me and said, Mr Drazy, Kelly is the in crowd. <laughs> yeah. Kelly was very generous at Christmas time. She'd go out and buy us all Christmas presents, gifts from various shops. Then go to Myers, this is in Pacific Fair, and get them gift wrapped. Such a thoughtful girl. <laughs> Can you imagine she didn't buy them from Myers, just got them gift wrapped to gift wrap me? <laughs> I thought, why didn't I think of this? When Kelly was older, I found that she was using Sally's ID, which is next sister up. <laughs> And then managed to use Kelly's IDs and birth certificates and other documents to get her own uh, photo ID in, in Sally's name. What she did with them, I just don't want to know. <laughs> we gave Sally, uh, Kelly's sister Sally a ticket to winning for her 21st birthday. The friend that she was going with decided not to go, and so you guessed it, we ended up selling Kelly. We had to fork out another ticket for Kelly, which was, was not cheap at the time, just to keep her company. Sally came back after six months. Kelly came back after three years. <laughs> for a while, they lived in Fulham. Funny enough, the street next to where my father was born and lived. This place I lived in was a dump. <laughs> it was a dump. This, um, when I stayed, the first thing I noticed was the old shop shelves that they had in the kitchen. They found, they found it on the street with rows of grocery items lined up. It turns out the local shop had delivered boxes of various food items as a promotion to all the houses in the area, leaving them on their doorsteps. Sally and Kelly's flatmates 
which th there's one here or two here. Uh, decided to collect as many boxes as they could for themselves so they didn't have to go and buy groceries. <laughs> Another thing I remember about the place that it was freezing at night and the shower would alternate between slightly hot and freezing cold. There was also a hole in the wall where the water would leak into the unit downstairs where three ballerinas lived. Kelly was very accident prone when she was a kid. Always banging her head on the edges of tables. This... <laughs> This is something she never grew out of. <laughs> Instead of banging her head on the table, she'd fall off them. <laughs> At the Oktoberfest in Munich, obviously drinking lemonade, <laughs> she was standing on a seat and fell backwards onto a beer stein, cutting her back and ending up in hospital. The first we heard about it was when a teary-eyed Kelly phoned us as the doctors wouldn't let her out of hospital, as she'd been camping. Her doctor then called to say that she wasn't to carry anything heavy and that she returned back to England. And I'm pretty sure I remember it. I rang up Bill Johnson, who went and picked her up when she arrived back in England. And Bill's sitting over there. The flatmates looked after her and had to change her dressings for her until she recovered. Another incident was in Hong Kong when she was at a Halloween party. <laughs> this is only a couple of examples, by the way. And she fell backwards of a mezzanine floor about three metres to the ground. <laughs> there are plenty more stories and accidents, but that's enough for now. She's lucky to be alive. Whilst you have caused us some worry over the years, Kel, we're always very proud of you and all your achievements. You always wanted to travel to more countries than I have, and I think you might have done it. You're the only member of the family who's climbed Mount Everest with your friend Joel, without any climbing gear. <laughs> You've been brave enough to take risks in moving to Sydney and Hong Kong for your career. For all these achievements and everything in between, we're very proud of you. And for today, and for today you really are my favourite daughter. Aww. It was in Hong Kong that Kelly, Kelly met Silly Sean. That's what the grandkids call him anyway, Silly Sean. I can't remember when I first met Sean, but I know I liked him from the very beginning. When Kelly and Sean first came to look at the various venues for this wedding, the lady told Kelly how lucky she was to have Sean, and she obviously took an instant liking to him. And I have to agree with her. I also know that Sean is very lucky to have Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, you're a great guy, and we're very pleased to know you call, call you our son-in-law. So now I can say that I have two favourite son-in-laws. <laughs> The other one's sitting on the table right over there. <laughs> His three children read the thing at the, the wedding before. So I'm pleased to welcome Sean and his family to ours. I wish Kelly and Sean the greatest happiness together and ask for you to join me in raising your glasses to Kelly and Sean. <laughs> Kelly and Sean. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the father of the groom, Mr. Michael Rolls.
Well, I guess the first thing I was going to say that my name's Michael Rolls and I'm the father of the groom, but thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, firstly, um, I'd like to, um, from our, my, my family, my wife and my daughter Casey and her fiancé Wade, um, welcome Kelly and, and all the Dracys into the family. Kelly, you looked absolutely beautiful coming down today. <laughs> I got a bit worried about Robin because as Sean started to quiver his little lip, Robin burst into tears. <laughs> and it reminded me very much of when he was five years old and I used to have a little... I've never hit my kids, ever. <laughs> but I could pull them apart with words. Okay? So it was very easy if I got stuck into Sean that his lips would quiver and then he would have just a little man's cry. Okay. But also, um, I'd just like to say, um, my wife's here tonight. She's had open heart surgery six weeks ago tonight. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it happened all of a sudden, and we went to the heart surgeon, and, the, and typical mother, she said, it took me seven years to get him. And she said, all I want to do is make sure that I'm at that, that wedding on the 27th. So whatever you have to do. <laughs> yeah. She said, whatever you have to do, I don't care how much it hurts, just get me there. <laughs> okay. um, I'd also... Um, I'd like, like to um, say that uh, thanks for all of everyone for coming down. I know it's a long way from, uh, and I'm sure Sean's going to say that, but it's a long way from Sydney and various places and we've got people that come all the way from Cairns and, you know, that, that's, that's saying something for the persons that are here, for Kelly and Sean, that people want to be with you. Okay? <laughs> so, I've sort of taken a few points on this and I'm, I'm going to start off with a few things about the groom. And then the bride. <laughs> okay, but we'll start off with the broom. First of all, Sean's not only my son, he's my best mate. Okay? We've shared a lot of things together. We do a lot of things. We play a bit of golf. We both play off the same ha handicap. I uh, just want everyone to know that. Uh, that we do. <laughs> do play off the same handicap, so. He outdrives me by about... 40 metres, but I can putt better. <laughs> 100%. But I just want to tell you what, what type of person Sean is. I've got a couple of quick little stories to tell you. And he's got a good heart. I, I, I've got to tell you, he's got a very good heart. When we were living in Queensland, we were on acreage, and one morning we woke up and Robin and I heard this noise out in the outside, and we didn't know what it was. And I said, what's that sound like? And I got up to figure out what it was, and I looked in the lounge room, and here was our horse with Sean. And I said, mate, I said, Robin, quickly, you go out the door and get some carrots. I'll try and get the horse out before it starts kicking and wrecks the joint. So when we got her out past the pool, where she only had about half a metre to get by, so he'd walked her in through that, but she was a, she was a pretty good horse. My father had broken, he was an old, he was an old driver, so he, he told me she was foolproof, and obviously she was. And I said, mate, why did you bring her in? He said, Dad, raining. Absolute true story. And the next one is, look, I don't know if many people know if they've been in, about in a boat with Sean, but Sean is an excellent boat driver. He, he, is, he is fearless. He can get boats into pens with winds and everything where I start, I start getting the shakes thinking about it and, I, and he just takes over and throws them in. Is that correct, Adam? <laughs> But when he, was, when, when he was a kid, I bought him a, um, we bought him a, a tinny, and I think he was about 12 years old, and we had it hidden in the garage, and I don't know how he didn't find it, but he didn't. We put it in the water, and within 10 minutes of being in the water, I hear, nee, 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 nee. I look outside, and here's Rory. Rory is the local narc on the waterways in, uh, in the Georges River. 
So he'd busted Sean, right, for speeding. And I said, Rory, how can he? He's only got a six. He said, he's got a tennis shoe hidden in it. <laughs> Which makes it go faster for those that don't know. So hence, that was the start of um, what we call the River Rats. And a lot of the River Rats are sitting right next to me here. And um, they all used to get their tinnies and they used to put um, sand shoes underneath. And it wasn't, it was quite often we would come home to the jetty and there'd be eight or nine tinnies all, all tied up. I'd be out somewhere and I could smell barbecue going and I'd walk in and here was Hayden Bennett. He, he knew where the sausages were and he was cooking a sausage. I walked in and I said, how are you, Hayden? He said, mate, would you like a sausage? I said, OK. Sounds good. And the boys used to always... They were very competitive. The boys all trying to get up the highest in the air. The boats used to come down straight up in the air. It was frightening. And Hayden was the second best guy on the river. Now, when I say that, I used to tell him all the time, mate, there's a better kid than you. And Hayden was pretty good. Sean was... They were all pretty good. And I said, mate, there's a better kid than you out there. And you too, Sean. And they said, where is he? I said, you guys just don't see him, you know? You're out around the corner. He never existed. It went on for about three years until Hayden finally said, he's not there. <laughs> I got you for years, mate. I think you were about 28 before you realised, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. The next part of Sean's life was Waverley College, and there's a lot of the boys here. You know, we had a great, we had a great number of years with Waverley College. One of the best, foot, one of the best football teams um, I've ever seen. Those boys went from, like, prep first, that's year five and six, right through to year ten when they were all together. They got beaten once in all the private schools. They beat, every, they beat everyone. They beat, it, beat all the CAS schools. They beat all the GPS schools, the whole lot. And I said to Sean one time, mate, you'll never play in a better team than this. This is, this is just an amazing team. This is a once in a lifetime. He didn't believe me. And then he went and played for Southern District and got beaten like hell and found out, yeah, you're right. <laughs> By the way, Hayden was the captain. <laughs> oh, yeah, all of you are new to guys. But Sean, Sean had a pretty good life. We, we spent a lot of time water skiing. I figured early in life that if you keep kids out of trouble, right, if you hang around with them and give them something to do, then they won't, they won't find things to do. So we, we, many years ago, we had, a, uh, we had a caravan down on the, on the Shell Haven and uh, we used to come down and ski a lot. Sean's a very, very good skier. He, he'll tell you himself if you ask him. <laughs> right. But... He would ski all day. We'd ski in the morning and then he'd be the ski hog. And I'd look up, we'd be sitting up at the caravan having, having a beer or a cup of tea or something. And I'd look down, here was this kid walking up with a ski under his arm, knowing everyone in the place. And next minute, off he'd go. Then come back, off he'd go again. And this, and this would go all day. And, and um, we were there one day and I said to him, mate, are you going to have a shower? And he said, yeah, yeah, let's go and have a shower. I said, well, where's your toiletry gear? And he said, I don't know. I said, mate, we've been here a week. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now I'm going to leave Sean alone for a minute and I'm, I'm just going to talk about the bride, Kelly. Yeah. Kel Kelly, and Sean, Kelly and Sean decided that uh, it was costing them a bit too money over, much money over in Rose Bay and they come over and live with us for a few months and Kelly decided that she might like to buy a car. Okay? So, as they were going up to have a look, I said to them, hey guys, I'm pretty good at negotiating, you want me to come with you? Sean just looked at him and said, you're kidding, aren't you? <laughs> I said, Okay. So what happened was, they wandered up to Sutherland, they went into a VW dealer, to a poor sales guy by the name of Yannick. Now, he probably looked at this good looking blonde walking through the door and thought, ha, I've got a sale here and I'm going to make some money. Well, Kelly dragged him down bit by bit and I've, <laughs> and I've sort of explained to Sean, mate, when you negotiate, it's got to be a win-win. You've got to leave something on the table for everyone to eat. Well, Kelly had the turkey and the guy had the crumbs. <laughs> yeah. And I hear it on very good advice that he's no longer selling cars, he's doing real estate in Wagga. <laughs> to Kelly and Sean. Very interesting. No, 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 I haven't finished yet. No. No, but 
I've got to tell you about, I've, got, I've just got to tell you about the bride and the groom together. They decided that they'd go in the city to surf. Okay. And both being, both being very competitive and Sean being the gentleman that he was, ran along with Kelly and... And they were going at a pretty good pace and around about 250 metres out, Kelly took off. <laughs> By the Sean, time Sean realised she was gone, she was over the line smiling at him. <laughs> when they got back, I said, how'd you go? He said, nothing. I said, well, how did you go? Kelly said, I beat him. <laughs> and it goes down in the record forever. But guys, on a serious side now, competitive's being okay when you're, when you're dating and everything else, but now you two are married and you've got to set your goals together. You're going to th life's, life's not easy. You're going to get your ups and downs. You know, you're going to... Nothing's, nothing's ever perfect, but if you work together and you have goals together, at the end of the day, you'll come out stronger and better and feel more, about, more in love than you ever will before. Okay. And the last thing I was last thing is I want to talk about grandchildren. Okay. Now, for those that don't know, my wife is dying to have a grandchild. Okay. She even put a bounty out. Now I've got one 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 daughter and one son. And the bounty, by the way, I just want to let you know, the bounty still applies, okay? I'm not upping it. <laughs> What'd she say? Robin just said she'll double it for twins. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, that's enough from me. I just wanted to make it a little bit of fun. To the bride and groom. Toast. Outstanding, outstanding. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest speaker is Kelly's best friend. They went to school together and Kelly's the godmother to her daughter Luna, Joelle Dow. Need to picture everyone naked first. Good evening. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, about 150 of you, I think. I'm Joelle, Kelly's maid of honour, and her oldest and dearest friend. And firstly, I'd like to thank Kelly for forcing me to do a speech tonight. <laughs> Though I could hardly pass up the chance to speak to you all about my lifelong friend and the man who's captured her heart. Just quickly, a shout out to my fellow bridesmaids here, Emma, Sally and Mel. Not only... <laughs> not only are they stunning, but they have been excellent company and a great support to Kelly. Not just today, but in the months leading up to it too. Thank you, girls. <laughs> so... I've had the pleasure of knowing Kelly for about 25 years. We truly do have a unique and rare friendship that continues regardless of what we've got going on in our lives. Over the years, as you can imagine, we've had quite a few adventures together, but none remains more memorable than our trek to Mount Everest Base Camp. Now, I don't know what I was expecting, <laughs> but wow, it's a really big mountain. <laughs> <laughs> But if you know Kelly, you know she loves a challenge, so she was in her element on that trek and practically sprinted up there. <laughs> Meanwhile, while I felt like I was going to collapse the entire time. But she inspired me. Not only was she unstoppable with her endless energy, but she encouraged me every step of the way. She made me laugh. She kept me going when all I wanted was to give up. She saved my feet from frostbite, and she got me to base camp. However... 
our joy was short-lived as we soon realised that you have to climb back down. <laughs> Thank God we found a bar along the way. The trip was capped off when we got food poisoning on our last day in Nepal. <laughs> Fair to say we were relieved to make it home. I'm telling you this story because it sums up so much about Kelly as a person and about our friendship. Even after everything, including the food poisoning, I can honestly say that I had the best time simply because she was by my side. <laughs> no matter how much time passes, the physical distance between us or how much we may change, her friendship is something I know I can depend on. And I'm not alone. She is a unique force in all our lives. Yes, she is an amazing friend, but as a person, few can match her intelligence, grace, kindness and heart. I know we all treasure our friendship with Kelly, who always sees the good in others and inspires us to be better. I am truly blessed. <laughs> I am truly blessed knowing she will, she will remain a bright and glowing constant in my life. Kelly. <laughs> I am honoured to share this day with you as your maid of honour and I'm so proud to call you my best friend. You are. You are a beacon of light, a pillar of strength and my safe place. I love you. Oh. <laughs> and speaking of love, we are of course here today to witness the great love of Sean and Kelly. As you no doubt know, they came together quickly. <laughs> they met in Hong Kong in April, holidayed in Italy in July, and by August they were living together in Sydney. <laughs> Sean, I love that you have not only found a kindred spirit in Kelly, but that you brought her home, and together you have found a life and love that you adore. Kelly and Sean... You share an infectious joy and humour that makes everyone want to be around you. I know you will continue to go on supporting and loving each other through anything life throws at you. I have no advice for you. In fact... <laughs> in fact... <laughs> it is I who learns from you. And I have wishes for you. Though they're not fancy and excuse the cliche, but the truth is, I wish you both a life filled with love and the eternal joy of sharing this world with your best friend. So, before I burst into tears or make you all cry with boredom, please join me in a toast to the newlyweds. <laughs> to Kelly and Sean. To Sean and Kelly. So, without further ado, Mr Andrew Shipton. And Joseph Fitzpatrick. Friends and family, good evening. For those of you who don't know us, my name is Joe Fitzpatrick and this is Andrew Shrimpton. And we've been tasked with the job of trying to keep Sean, who still has his pocket money he saved from the age of four, from having a total meltdown on a day that isn't known for its great value and reasonable prices. Just joking. All the groomsmen, Johnny, Hado, Shrimp and I, are truly honoured to have been by Sean's side today to celebrate the next stage of his and Kelly's lives together. Firstly, I'd also like to make mention, a special mention of Michael and Robin Rolls. The Rolls family have been extremely generous to us boys over many years. Whether it be having us down the coast, water skiing at Nara, or countless times at the beautiful beach house at Manana, or up on the Sunshine Coast. Michael and Robin and Casey, thank you for having us and putting up for us for so many years. And it must be said, it's so great to see you both here fighting fit after your recent operations. Round of applause. <laughs> Michael, it's especially wonderful to see the doctor's report you proudly bandied around at, at Sean's Bucks, advising you have the heart of a 35 year old. A round of applause for the Rolls family. And a special welcome to Kelly's family too. Yeah, 
you'll get your turn in a moment, Robin. Okay, okay. In the best man speech, it's customary uh, to comment on the bride and the bridesmaids. What a creep. Yeah. We decided that I would do this as Fitzy couldn't do it without spending a few minutes on his personal interactions with each of the bridesmaids <laughs> who he literally met today. Then he'd cry. Then he'd thank every person in the room. Sean's paid for the band. We want to hear them. <laughs> Ladies, you look beautiful today. Kelly, you look absolutely amazing. Sean's a very lucky man and pu clearly punching well above his weight. <laughs> Sean obviously knew this very early on too as only two weeks after meeting Kelly in Hong Kong, he had booked a holiday to Europe, a holiday to Europe, to accompany Kelly and Mel on a girl's trip <laughs> without actually being invited. Uh, I know. <laughs> Rolsey, I'm not sure what was worrying you so much about the thought of Kelly partying in the beach clubs of Mykonos <laughs> with her girlfriends, but stalking her on that trip was clearly one of your smartest decisions. <laughs> My wife, Kim, and I both couldn't be happier that Sean made the desperate flight <laughs> to <laughs> Europe only 14 days after knowing Kelly. <laughs> As we both love Kelly and have already made such great memories with, with her and Sean, including when they crushed our honeymoon last year. <laughs> I have proudly known Sean for over 30 years. And the one thing I can say about him is that he's very empathetic. Now, the Oxford Dictionary's definition of empathy is showing an ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Rosie loves a chat. <laughs> and he's a particularly good listener if the subject has something to do with freight, freight forwarding, <laughs> logistics, moving materials from one point to another, <laughs> customs, pallets. Containers and FedEx. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, Rosie is very empathetic. He cares about you. He's interested in you. He gives you his time. He lends you his ear. He will patiently listen to your problem, no matter how tedious or long, and generally bends over backwards to help where he can. He would dead set care so much that if I'm upset about something, he would go so far as to insert himself into the same mindset to feel the same pain and then instruct me on how to handle it. It's a beautiful thing. Before you know it, Rosie has manoeuvred himself into the problem, managed to flip the whole situation on its head to the point where we are now discussing his problems. Of late, this is usually has something to do with the cost of this wedding. <laughs> hey, have a drink! Drink up! <laughs> 15 minutes later, we're working out his problem. I've since forgotten about my problem, and I just want to hang up. Rosie, I've got to go, mate. I'm in a lift. <laughs> Sean's got an uncanny ability to shamelessly approach any stranger and start a conversation like he's known the bloke his whole life. Seriously, I thought the bloke had Asperger's until it was just a few years ago. No matter what the occasion, Rolsey will undoubtedly bail some poor bastard up and chew their ear off about the cost of per cubic metre of fucking getting grapes from fucking Peru to wherever. But who gives a shit? I'm sure half the people in this room have been the victim of this freight, freight talk at one time or another. Where Rolls will ramble off 
interesting facts and figures about his logistical conquests. <laughs> Mate, guess how many containers of Bose headphones that I've got in the water right now? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. 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 No. The question is always rhetorical because he's answered the question before you've had, had time to think about it. To prove this, can anyone here tell me how many pale, uh, containers of San Pellegrino rolls he shipped in the 2016 financial year? 58. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> oh, the master. <laughs> Everyone on this table knew that answer. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. <laughs> Anyone know how many Kia Sportages came off the docks at Port Campbell that same year? You can literally give me the customs brokerage on that fucking deal, honestly. I rest my case. Stop talking about freight. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> oh, Here we go. He's trying to argue that it was 120 containers, not 104. <laughs> Mate, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this characteristic is obviously a strong one. Oh my God. <laughs> Where the hell did he get that from, honestly? The roving mic will come yeah, no, soon, Mike. I know. Uh, this characteristic is obviously a strong one when, you have to, when you're in sales, so it's served him well. Uh, this confidence, his genuine good nature and his passion for all things freight has seen him achieve some... <laughs> <laughs> has seen him uh, achieve some great successes in his career, which is no doubt just getting started. There was never any doubt Sean was going to end up in the freight industry uh, as, as he was always going to follow in the footsteps of his old man. I'm going to apologise right now, Michael Rolls. This is Fitzy. Sean has, as did Bo Shrimp and I, a great amount of respect and love for Michael and Robin. We have, over the years, keenly observed how close he is with both of them, and rightly so. They often speak, and Sean often seeks their counsel. Inevitably, some of those conversations come back to us. <laughs> I can instantly tell when this happens, when Sean starts a conversation with the words, the old man said. <laughs> We love you, Mike. When we hear this opener, we are already sitting back thinking, how good is this one gonna be? <laughs> when uh, the old man said, is thrown out, I know I have to sit down, get comfortable, and listen to what would be the most over-exaggerated story treated as absolute gospel. <laughs> If I had a dollar for every time Rosie throws out the old man said, I'd be able to pay for this most beautiful wedding. <laughs> and also Casey's, which is coming up. <laughs> this well-trodden opening line shows you just how much he listens to and respects his father and how much he values his advice and wisdom. For us, the next part of that sentence is figuring out how much we need to shave off the story to pare back the flagrant and unbridled exaggeration. But it's actually a thing of beauty, genuinely. It's just another demonstration of, of a much loved and cherished friendship Sean shares with his parents. And I can only imagine that will continue down the line to his children. It must be said that the greatest storyteller was Sean's beloved pop, Billy. I had the pleasure of knowing Billy, a real character and much missed. And as Michael always said about Bill's stories, whatever he said, half it, then quarter it. 
I'm sure that tradition will carry on. <laughs> Rollsy loves a fad. Golf, triathlons, water skiing, ro rollerblading, skateboarding, wakeboarding, <laughs> tinny bashing, rugby, snowboarding, rugby league, bike riding, punting. When he's into something, it's not half-hearted. He'll be decked out in the best equipment money can buy. He'll be so engrossed in this latest sport that you'd think he's been paid to do it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Sean's a very talented individual. Once he puts, to mind, once he puts his mind to something, he can generally master the art. Uh, he has a sense of confidence in this new sport, though, that can only come from one place. His parents. <laughs> Sean's the ultimate golden boy. <laughs> Apologies right now. I'm also scared of his parents, so. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. The car trips on the way home from schoolboy rugby in the back of the Rolls car were the greatest. Sean would get a play-by-play reenactment of the game delivered by his old man where I swear to God he was recounting full kerns playing against a bunch of 10-year-olds. <laughs> Sean, you hit that kid so hard, I thought they were going to get an ambulance. <laughs> Greatest hit I've ever seen, hands down. We're all sitting there going, what the fuck is he talking about? To be honest, my mum actually wants me to be more like Sean, so he is actually a golden boy, so. <laughs> there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. It's okay, it's all right. Shawnee loves a winner. When I first met him in the early 90s, after the family returned from Queensland, he was a die-hard Brisbane Broncos and Maroons fan. Every league, every league fan can remember the tremendous success those teams were going through at the time. I can remember countless times Sean calling me on Origin Night after every late Queensland try to squeeze out another last-minute victory to rub it in. After the Bronx started to wobble, Rugby League was parked, and his loyalty focused on Rugby Union. By moving on to Ramwick Juniors, which set him on in motion for his schoolboy success, pipping a young Duncan Coates for the hooker spot in the Waverley College first 15. It should be noted, Coates he took that very well, and has often mentioned over the years how much Sean deserved that spot. <laughs> sorry, that's a bit of an in-joke, sorry. There was a short stint with Southern District's Colts rugby, as Michael mentioned. Then it was back to league for the West Tigers, where he trained with their Jersey Flag team for an off-season in the early 2000s. Apparently, he was getting around Leichhardt wearing an old Tigers singlet and shadow boxing like the late, late great Laurie Nichols. <laughs> that went down well with the locals. There's the old empathy. When the family moved to the Shire, he naturally began his loyalty with the Cronulla Sharks, and then on to the Saints when he got in with the Dallas boys who are here tonight. He's even been spotted wearing all black shorts for the Hot Diggity Dogs touch footy team. <laughs> Some will call him a journeyman, but really the boy just loves a winner. And, and Kelly, you are no doubt his greatest win of all. <clears throat> We're supposed to finish with some sort of like, wise words of marital advice for Sean. Looking for inspiration, we asked, or Kim, uh, Joey and I asked our wives, Kim and Anna, girls, we need to give Rolsey a bit of advice for this speech. What makes us such rock star husbands? <laughs> their, their answers weren't helpful. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you with. Losing to your wife in sports is emasculating. <laughs> Stop competing against her and you won't give her an opportunity to beat you. <laughs> it's as simple as that.
<clears throat> just, just a little bit more. On a personal note, my wife Anna and I were very flattered that you relentlessly lobbied us so hard for the entire pregnancy to be Darcy's godfather. <laughs> we are genuinely, luck genuinely lucky that our boy is going to grow up with you and Kelly playing such a special role in his life. Yeah. <laughs> to finish, John, Hado, Shrimp and I would like to say, to sh to say Sean, you are everyone's great mate. You befriend everyone you cross paths with, and you, we're all lucky recipients of that. You cannot say a bad word about you. You are a dear old mate, and we are so honoured to be up here with you tonight, and we are so delighted for you that you have found Kelly. Kelly, what you have in Sean is a man who's committed to his work, his family, his friends, and above all, committed to a beautiful life with you. And if, the, and if you two combine like you do on the Touch Footy team, that is, by simply listening to Kelly's instructions <laughs> and staying out of the way, then it's going to be a very happy and successful marriage. I love this, keep it going. Why aren't you standing up? <laughs> I'm here to keep this. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so in parting, we'd all like to wish you calm waters and a prosperous voyage. If you can, please be upstanding and join me in a toast to the bride and groom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure what we can do after that one, but anyway, we'll try. Please join me in welcoming to the microphone this beautiful bride, Kelly Rolls. <laughs> we had a run sheet, clearly didn't stick to it. Hello everyone, my turn to say a few words. I've kept my speech short, because let's face it, Sean probably won't. <laughs> I'd like to start with a few thanks. Firstly, thank you for all being here today. Thanks to those who have crossed timelines and state lines, especially those from Hong Kong and the US. <laughs> um, and those who have made the journey from Sydney, it means a lot. Bunge, good job tonight. It was always a risk. <laughs> and no, that's not my grandfather. It's just one of our mates. <laughs> AJ, thank you for being our celebrant today. Where is he? There he is. We met, uh, we met 11 years ago, both working at the Gold Coast Radio Centre at Gold FM. We share a birthday. Clearly many years difference in age. Uh, it's an honour to have you marry us today, so thank you very much. You. To Sean's family, to his mum and dad, Michael and Robin. There he is. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, thank you for so many things. Not least for letting me live with you for six months. Thanks for making today possible. For your support, your advice and your endless patience. Probably with me, mainly. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Casey? <laughs> True. Um, you've given us so much, even when you've had so much to deal with. Robin, it's so good seeing you so well and here today. She's good. She's good. Uh, you've both helped today make per be perfect. Uh, you've helped us take the perfect step towards giving you those grandkids. Thank you. <laughs> oh, 
pressure's on. Jesus. Jeez. Oof. Casey. Uh, and to Casey, my new sister. Thank you for the reading. I loved it. Now to my mum and dad. Mum, thank you for being the strongest person I know. For your drive, your energy, your little pocket rocket. <laughs> for your openness and your honesty and for always being there for us, all three of us. Uh, for always giving everything for us. And thanks for letting me know I've always been your favourite. <laughs> And Dad, for working so hard for us, for always supporting us and encouraging me to strive for what I need to be happy. And thanks for staying calm when I've called late at night. <laughs> From overseas hospitals and even a police station. And to my not-so-new not sisters, Emma and Sally. Emma, perhaps most importantly, thank you for reminding me to never settle. Also, for all the encouragement and support you've given me at the start of my university journey. <laughs> Sally, thank you for your open mind, for never judging me. Also, for being an amazing mother, I will come to you for advice. Thanks also for Blair, a legendary brother-in-law for me, a partner in crime for Sean. I love how you both get on. <laughs> Jack, Sammy and Toby, you've been a big part of today. Your readings were perfect. My dear friends, Mel and Joelle. Where is Joelle? Is she? Oh, okay. Mel, we wouldn't be here today without you. <laughs> not sure if I'll thank you later or not, we'll see. Um, and my experience in Hong would not have been the same without you. We've been through so much together. We've laughed together. We've cried together. We've travelled together. And we've had too much fun together, getting up to way too much no good together. <laughs> I always know you've got my back and I've always got yours. And Joelle. Anyway, she's, yeah, climbing base camp. Um, she's attending to a beautiful little girl, Violet, so that's okay. But um, what a speech. Uh, I'm so lucky to have you by my side tonight. We met in primary school 25 years ago. We've become best friends since. I'm really annoying that she's not here. I might go back to her. Okay, cool. Um, our friendship has withstood distance and time. It's invaluable to me. You're an amazing mother and the most generous person I know. I'm so proud to be Luna's godmother and I couldn't be happy, happier to be, have you by my side today. I can't see you Bazza either, so anyway. Bazza, I love you too, buddy. Groomsman, scrubbed up okay, given most of you had to go up a size in a suit. <laughs> if you didn't know, Shrimp lost his button today trying to do up his jacket. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, Sean, as you all know, Sean and I met in Hong Kong. Before we met in person, he friended me on Facebook. 
and sent me some interesting texts. <laughs> which I can't read out in front of his mother. <laughs> I was in Hong Kong when I first received them. Shortly afterwards, so was Sean. After a long weekend trying to resist his advances, I remember thinking, oh, he seems all right, let's see where this goes. <laughs> he then chased me to Italy, could have gone either way. Fortunately for me, it went really well. And then just three months after we first met, we were living together in Sydney. When I first met Sean, I didn't want to settle, I wanted to be sure. I didn't want to trade the right time for the wrong person. And I haven't. I found my partner, I found my person. <laughs> Sean, even from the start, it's been so easy. You completely get me, all of me. It's effortless, there's no pretense, we just work. Your passion for work inspires me. And whilst you've lost some hair... <laughs> trying to be nice, guys. <laughs> and whilst you've lost some hair over it... <laughs> You've never lost your enthusiasm for it. <laughs> and your unfaltering support never ceases to amaze me, even when I lose my shit over uni assignments. I love how you connect with people, how you always have time for people. But we aren't, can't go anywhere without you bumping into someone you know. <laughs> but as you rightly remind me, it costs you nothing to say hello. <laughs> and he's nearly always right. <laughs> However, after he had a hot tip, Clear side of the bookie, en route to place his bet, he bumped into someone he knew. The race started, the horse came in, so whilst you were saying hello, your winnings were saying goodbye. <laughs> I love that your actions speak louder than words, as that's saying something because we all know you're not so short of a few words. <laughs> Billy boy. <laughs> Looking ahead, I know the things that I love about you will be the same things that will make you an amazing father. Our children will learn to play golf. They will learn how to read a form guide. <laughs> they will learn how to cook a, kick a footy and they will learn to never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> Sean, I love you and I look forward to spending the rest of my life with you. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, AKA The Grub, the groom, Mr. Sean Rolls. Wow, haven't I just been carved up? 
I wish I had another 30 minutes to go back outside and rewrite re- re- my speech because if I would have known this was going to happen, I would have put a few more extra bits in there. And Kel and I, during the week, uh, had a conversation. She said, look, Sean, sit down. I said, what's up? She said, your speech. I said, yeah, what about it? She said, have you done it yet? I said, no. She said, well, you know, when are you going to do it? And I said, look, I'll get it done. It's, yeah, it's, we, we, meet, we meet deadlines in freight. <laughs> <laughs> she said to me, she said, look, whatever you do, I know you're going to be sincere, but just make sure that you're not sitting there taking pot shots at all your mates in the room, because most of the people in the room aren't going to know what's going on, and after hearing what's been happening here, it's been an absolute carve up. I've got my pants pulled now. <laughs> look, just a couple of things over here. I said, we, we went to MJ Bale to get our suits. Poor old Fitzy, poor old Fitzy rocks in. He's trying to make friends with the guy that, that, puts, the, uh, that puts the suits on us. Quite, quite a floss he was, and uh, took, took a good liking to Fitz. And <laughs> it, they couldn't find a size 40 for the guy. I mean, come on. I mean, this guy is so upset that the cock and bull in Bondi Junction shut down. Shut down. He can't go and have his five schooners most nights with Dars. And as for shrimp, for those who don't know shrimp, you know, he's already retired. He's 35 years old. He's retired. He's obviously been in the good paddock for the last 12 months because have a look at him. <laughs> I tell you what, he's on first name basis with all the delivery guys in the area. <laughs> I've literally been there sitting there racking my brain just saying there's got to be a retort here because you are not going to pull my pants down like you just done. (laughs) (laughs) Mate, you've had your turn. I've got the last word to reply here, all right? (laughs) Anyway, enough of all that rubbish. I'll get back to where I was going to go before I got my pants pulled down. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my wife and I, <laughs> Kelly Drazy. I'm going to have to get used to that, but it gives me great pleasure to thank everyone here today for sharing our special day with us. It's extremely overwhelming, as you would have seen me up there today. I, when, every, when everyone started to come across and Kelly come down the, the aisle, I just absolutely lost my shit. I, I don't know, have a look at the girl. She looked absolutely stunning. It means a great deal for, to get this many people in this room like this and uh, uh, standing up there today when you guys started to congregate, it, that, that's when it really hit home. How much this really means to us when you guys started congregating it. It really hurts. I mean, most people on their wedding day describe it as the happiest day of their lives. That worries me because it implies that as of from tomorrow, there's a lifelong decline ahead, so I'm certainly making the most of it. <laughs> The bridesmaids, Mel, or Joelle, Mel, Sal, Emma, you ladies look absolutely stunning and really shown up these, these groomsmen. But as you can see from the looks of it, it's not too hard. I'd like to thank you guys for all being amazing friends uh, and sisters to Kel, and I know she loves you guys dearly. Organising uh, Ken's, hell that went, went, uh, Ken's hand, hands that went down really well without a hitch, and supporting today. Old Bunge couldn't park the boat, he he crashed the boat into the Rose Bay Wharf without me. The groomsmen, Joey Shrimp, Johnny Hado, I'm extremely proud to have you four guys as mates and standing, have you guys standing by my side today as I was with you guys by yours means the absolute world to me. We've uh, we've spent, I've known you guys a very, very long time. We've had uh, so many good times together through primary school, high school, playing rugby, out in the water as we've heard. Several overseas trips and huge nights out. And Joey, I'm an absolute, uh, I love Darcy. And uh, just him seeing him come down today and falling over just like you on the, on the touch field. <laughs> For those who don't know, Fitzy's the slowest bloke that's ever played touch football. 
the guy tries to play touch football like he's playing rugby, trying to beat people on the outside shoulder. I mean, who tries to try beat, beat people on the outside shoulder playing touch football? It's all about three dumps and you have a crack, right? You still haven't got it, mate, but, you know, you're the heart and soul of the hot diggity dogs, mate. You're well played, son. Uh, the MC, the old bunge. You might have heard us talking about this, this bunge word, right? It actually stems from the word bungee. Bungee is an Aboriginal word for white friend. That's what we call our friend over here, Bunge, you know, because uh, he gets a little bit out wide, the boy. But um, I've known Adam Leslie probably for 20 years now, and uh, uh, he, he actually gave me my first opportunity in, in my proper business life, and uh, he's absolutely made me work for it. He, um, <laughs> I, think, I, think the, I think the count is, I think, I think I've been sacked and reinstated probably about 120 times. <laughs> Apparently when boats run late, it's probably my fault. So he takes it all out in me and my friend over there, Russell Young. Here's a new recipient. Um, Adam Leslie, uh, we actually, when I first met Kel, we were actually up in Hong Kong, as, as you heard before, on a business deal. And when it all went down, selling a container grapes to Mel Bromley, I thought to myself, shit, if this goes pear shaped I'm going to lose two friends and a customer. So I thought, what's the best way to do it? You get on the plane, you go up there and make sure you... You get in the other end and make sure it happens okay. <laughs> so it went, when we got up there, old Bunch had had 45,000 schooners on the plane. <laughs> it was a blithering mess. Anyway, so we, we ended up going out to dinner in, in LKF and um, Mr. Leslie got on one of his massive highs and no one could get a word in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he's, he's basically he's been a great friend to Kel and I. He's been there from, the, from day dot. And uh, mate, we love you. We love you dearly. Thank you for the answer. I'd like to say a special uh, mention to all the people that have travelled from abroad. The Hong Kong crowd here, over here on the table. Mitchy Dowse from New York. In interstate friends from the Sunshine Coast here on this table. Brizzy, Gold Coast friends and family. The eastern suburbs and the Shire. It's bloody hard to get some of you across the Anzac Parade and those two bridges that separate the mainland. It's quite a humbling experience to realise that we have friends and family that care so much about us and we sincerely mean a lot to us. The Drazy family, David and Anne, from the very first moment I met you both at your home in, in Mount Nathan, you made me feel very welcome. And I thank you for Kelly's hand in marriage. Da David, David's a plumber by trade and an absolute craftsman. It's been really impressive to see the transformation of the horse adjustment facilities that you created over the past few years. And I look forward to adjusting his, king his kingdom free of charge after he wins in a couple of group ones. Now I'm part of the family. Any, your energy is truly infectious and it will be a pleasure to be your son-in-law. I can see us attending the, the races at Ramwick, having a good time while Kel's at home studying. <laughs> the barbecues out in the back, de back deck have been extremely enjoyable, and I look forward to many more of those in the years to come. M, Sal, Wilksy, and the kids, Jack, Simi, and Toby. Again, from the outset, you guys have been so welcoming to me, and I, uh, I love the fact that you guys embrace me and I embrace you. <laughs> Having Jack, Sammy and Tobes um, you know, at our place the other day, um, they've got a real sporting ability and as my grandfather taught me that uh, you know, bloodlines make a thoroughbred and you know, these guys, these got proper sporting ability and uh, the kids are out the back doing backflips and whatnot and I was just standing there just going, like, how does this happen? Like, they're, just, they're doing it like, like it was nothing. Anyway, to the Rolls family, my family. Mum, Dad, Case, Wade, brother-in-law to be. Uh, where do I start? Whether it's the patriarch or the matriarch, you can only have one ruler. Ready for it? Dad always says. He, he who has the gold always makes the rules. Only that mum knows where all the gold is. It's all catalogued and all accounted for. Sorry, mate. In all seriousness, I'm in absolute awe of you both. 41 years married through many ups and downs.
is a true testament of your love, strength, devotion to each other and our family. Most of you would know that our family aren't afraid to make some changes and move states from here and there. I liken this to be like the American Indian tribe, the Nike Comanche. We're always moving. <laughs> Having both come from humble beginnings to where you are today, I have the utmost respect. The older I get, the more I appreciate the life that you have provided for us. Your love, guidance and support is truly unwavering. Wavering. The values, belief and work ethic you have instilled in us have really prepared us for the life and for the family that we plan to create soon. <clears throat> we were taught that the harder you work, the luckier you get, and the chances you get, you, you take them when you get them. If all else, all else fails, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you start all over again. <clears throat> if I could be half the parents you've been to me and Casey, that I'm sure the kids that I have will be on track to their life ahead. I'm extremely proud to be your son, and I know you're proud of me, and I look forward to the next stage in your lives, seeing you guys as godparents, uh, grandparents. My God, are these kids going to be spoiled? I know mum wouldn't like to make, make a fuss about what she's recently been through, but I feel it's, uh, it should share, as you're truly an inspiration. Mum's been sick um, for the last couple of years, and um, we found out um, through chance that uh, through our next door neighbour, um, Steve Folks, some of you guys may know who he is, he's a Canterbury legend that died at 59 years of age, he died in his, in his garage, probably the fittest guy we know, and uh, while mum and dad were actually attending his, uh, his funeral, they were on the way home and uh, went off to Woolworths, and dad got back in the car and and uh, mum said, look, you need to take me to hospital. So they uh, took her to hospital, did the test, and found out she didn't have chronic fatigue at all. It was a problem with the mitral valve in her heart. So they said, look, you've got to, you've got to, be, uh, you've got to go straight in right now. So uh, through the guy that, that was there, the surgeon, um, a guy called Matthew Horton, um, basically they went to see him. Uh, on, this was on the Tuesday. Um, so somehow or other, dad being dad, started talking about himself again and said that, he <laughs> said that he'd had a, had a knee replacement. <laughs> He's got a good heart. Somehow or other got onto the thing that, that Matt said, well, yeah, a good mate of mine, he, he had both his, both his knees done. I played with him at New South Wales Golf Club every, every, every Wednesday. And dad goes, is that Peter Doust? How do you know Peter Doust? <laughs> oh, my son Sean, he's good mates with Matt and Mitch, you know, he used to be with Mitch, and da 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 da. And the guy goes, Oh, well, perfect. He said, Well, normally it's six weeks to do this operation. How about we do it this Friday? <laughs> really? <Yeah>. Nep. <laughs> it's, it's bloody awesome to drop the Doust name and actually come through with something. Mum, we don't say it enough in our family, as actions speak louder than words, but we love you dearly and we're so happy for you to be on the road to being happier. And it's a telltale sign that she's recovering is that she's treating, starting to give it to the old man. <laughs> Case, I know you're one of my greatest supporters and I know you've had some challenges in your life and it's great to see you rise above them and you're in a great space at the moment, having been recently engaged to a good guy, Wade. And I wish you all the very best for your life ahead and enjoy this nice time together. My grandparents, I um, only ever got to know two of them, uh, Nan and Pop, a huge part of my life. Um, they're really a um, big part of who I am today. <clears throat> he taught me everything to know about horse racing. And uh, being a drover, running away from Sydney at 12 years age and, been, and going out there as a 12-year-old boy and coming back, you can imagine the sort of bloke he was. Never took a backward step in his life. Um, one, of the, one of the fond uh, memories I always remember, like the likes of these boys here, would always ring me Melbourne Cup Day to say, Shawnee, what's Billy got? What's Billy got? What's Billy got? 
And you could guarantee that he would have the winner because he'd be watching the, ra the racing channel 24-7. <laughs> it was uncanny. Uh, to Kel, my wife. Mel Bromley, Mel Bromley, can you please stand up? <laughs> Guys, if it wasn't for Mel Bromley, we all wouldn't be sitting here tonight, let's face it. <laughs> Mel Bromley is, is the ultimate wing woman, like... Yeah, I, pretty much, like, she, every, every opportunity she had to, to, to throw me a short ball, she always made sure it was right on the, right on the chest. Oh. Anyway. Anyway, as you all heard, yes, it is all true. I did chase Kel down. I did go here. I did go there. But, you know, when I met her in Hong Kong on that trip, and, and, and listening to her and hearing things, I just thought to myself, anyone who's around 30 years, 30 years old, got a perfectly normal job, prepared to throw it all away and move to Hong Kong for a startup business, I'm in. Yeah. That's what really struck me about Kel, because I thought to myself, you know what? When things get tough, if someone's like this prepared to, to go and do this and start all over again, then, you know, if you've got to be... You know, if you're going to be in the trenches, she's someone you want firing around you rather than hitting it. As you all saw today, um, when Kel walked down the aisle, I was absolutely knocked off my socks. Yes, I'm a Bradman. I get it. I get it. Besides the, the obvious attractions, yeah, some of the qualities that this, this young lady has. Yeah, she's very strong-willed. We all know that. She can never be told. You just got to go along. She's loving. Once she gets to know you, she, she really, really embraces you and has no time for what we would call mugs. <laughs> she's extremely loyal. Um, all the friends that she has, yeah, they're all very, very long-term relationships and... Probably unlike me, it takes a little while for Kel to warm up, but whereas I'll, you know, I'm like a light pole, pick one up, drop one off. <laughs> one, one of our synergies is, is, is our love for having a great time and um, looking at all these people here in the room, there's a fairly consistent um, theme here with um, all, our, all our friends and, um, you know, Combining, you know, getting together and, and doing a lot of these trips here and there. Um, it's fantastic to see that a lot of these people here are looking around here in the room are the same sort of like-minded people and our love for having a great time. And obviously that sometimes it gets a little bit in the way and we, we wake up most weekends going, what the hell just happened? But we're always ready to go to the next one. <laughs> Living around the corner from Shrimp, we're going around to his place. It's like Disneyland over there. We go around, it's like... Can we have another bottle? We're on, we're on holidays. <laughs> Mum, it's not a Waverley thing. The coal mine is Eastern, the coal mine is a private school, the Eastern Suburbs, as, as GV told me. <laughs> we're extremely competitive, as you've all heard. That um, back when we first got together, I thought I was a, a, a reasonable long-distance runner. Obviously, she absolutely pulled my pants down, and sent me home. And I, I tried a couple of times again and still failed and failed it, but I'm, I'm still, still setting out to, uh, on a campaign to try and beat her. One of, one of, one of the real main qualities about Kel is, that we're, we're together is, and all of this together is that the qualities that, this, that Kel possesses is that she's the type of person I'd actually want to be the mother of my children. And, and, it, and it's, oh, here we go. We're getting calls over here now. Jesus Christ. Raise that bounty and we'll, we'll consider it. <laughs> My grandfather has taught, taught me that, that you are the people that you hang around. And if you lay down with bad dogs, you get up with fleas. Mr. Leslie, you're a flea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to wrap this up by saying that, Kel, I love you very much. 
I'll do whatever it takes to make you happy. We're building a good life together, and I have no doubt in my mind that we'll be successful whatever way we go about it. Come and prove it all.